big data is dead. Like, let's do a quick recap. What is big data actually? What are people in, people saying when they talk about big data? And I try to summarize this as shortly as possible. As process, when you process large amounts of data to gain new insight and create new products or insights and create new products, right? That's the, the, the whole premise of it. Big data, large amounts of data. There is a bit more than just big data. The, the four V's, we're, we're going to talk about them in a sec. But I, that's the, I, I, I think we can all agree that was the main thing. We had all that huge amount of data and it was big data and we were trying to do something really, really cool with it. Right? I think that was the, that was the, the big, big idea behind this. And when we talk about this, big data, usually what comes up are the four V's of big data. And I'm guessing you have also heard about the four V's of big data. The four V's of big data were volume, basically the size of the data that we were all processing so large amounts of data that we were unable to, to do this with normal tools. Um, velocity, where the data was coming super, super fast. So large, large sums of data that are coming very fast with a, a large variety in, in different formats and different forms. And the, the fourth V, the veracity thing was always a bit difficult to understand was always that the data that is coming in we're never really sure if the data is right that is coming in. Right? Before, whenever we were processing data, it was always the case that data was coming from very structured systems, um, was very clean, very clear usually. And so that was something where veracity come, came in, where we said, okay, there are large sums amount of data, large amount of data that's coming. Uh, it's coming very fast. It has different different data types. It's unstructured data, we were saying, and uh, we're also not sure if the data is right about this. Right. So, I think so far you you can follow. Right. You most likely have heard about that. One in the chat, if you have already heard about the four V's of of big data, I'm guessing um, that. So put a one in the chat. If you know this, that was also the topic of, and I already scratched this a bit, unstructured data where people were talking a lot about, oh, we were, we are processing that amount of unstructured data. In the end, when you think about what type of data is coming in nowadays and, and that you're processing, how unstructured is this really? Very often it's in a CSV format or it's in a, in a JSON format, but it's not really the case uh, like you're processing PDFs or, or, or some, some strange formats. Usually, yes, it's unstructured as it's not coming from a relational database. What a lot of people were thinking about back in the days when they were, they were talking about unstructured, but yeah, it's yeah, so that's the that's that's the idea behind this unstructured not really unstructured it's always quite structured and of course you might have here and there some some use cases where you are processing text full text of data but very often people are not doing this because the use case doesn't doesn't need this uh question here, what's the difference between big data engineer and data engineer? There's no difference. There's absolutely no difference. Um, but let's, let's keep this here. So, um, what was one of, one of the big things that people were talking about? That's absolutely out nowadays that nobody's interested in it or almost nobody's interested in it. Platforms, tools, and the one back in the day was Hadoop. Hadoop was the big thing. Oh, we have these large amounts of data and so 
fast, we cannot process it, we need some tool that we process it with, Hadoop. Hadoop was the big game changer for, for these workloads, for these use cases. And basically there were three, three big players around Cloudera, MapR and Hortonworks back in the day, which were the, the big players. Um, we all know MapR um, ran out of money. They closed down. Oh no, they, they, I think they got sold. They run out of money and then they got sold to buy, by I don't know, was it IBM or something? And then Hortonworks, which actually was, was purchased by Cloudera, where they never really did something, right? And for me, I mean, for me, the, I still have a close connection to Hadoop. I was working for so many years with Hadoop. I, in, in my big project, I got the idea to use Hadoop. I made proof of concepts with Hadoop. I set up Hadoop clusters, had Hadoop clusters run, worked with Spark on Hadoop. Started, I started out with MapReduce and stuff. I, I get it, Hadoop, but nowadays Hadoop isn't really, isn't really a thing anymore, right? And we're going to get to that in a sec. But generally, Technology that we were talking about at that time isn't really, really that important anymore. And when I think back to the days of when big data was hype and I, from the company back at, back at Bosch Rexroth, I was at twice there or three times. I was at a conference in Berlin, big data, big data mines. It was called super expensive, cost a few thousand euros the the main topic was always technology versus the analytics versus the outcome right it was always this that was always the two sides of of big data and back at the conferences people were there were the people like me who were very interested in the solutions, in the technical aspect, in the engineering aspect. And there were also other people that were very interested in the analytics back, uh, background in, or aspect, uh, in the solutions aspect, right? I remember there were people from, uh, from a insurance company, um, I think they were doing something with fraud detection for insurance fraud. Then there was a, another, a consultancy. They showed off, uh, how they did a, how they basically used images from Adidas products and they were recognizing fakes. They were processing data, were processing fakes. So the typical data science approach, right? It's more data science -y than, than actually big data and the engineering thing. So that was, those were the two, the two things. It was also technology versus analytics. It was also the engineering versus the science, right? That was, that was the thing, which in, in one term, in big, in that, that one term, big data, it doesn't really make sense anymore, right? That was, that's why I showed you the image in the beginning where data engineering and data science there coming down hard on big data because basically they, they replace it. But let me, let me talk about that in a sec more. Let's quickly, uh, Gavin says, I still see Hadoop experience on some job postings. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Gavin, we're going to come, I have a screenshot about this in two, three minutes. It's still a very interesting topic. Hadoop, it's not dead, but it's not really the future. There are use cases still for Hadoop, but mm, HP, HP bought map out. Oh, okay, HP bought it. So what did they do with it? Nothing, right? Um, okay, I was just quickly checking the, the questions here. So that was one thing. Now, I already hinted it, what did replace big data? the two terms data science 
and data engineering. And for me, this is a, a strict, a, a very clear replacement because like I showed you in that, in that slide here, that that was usually the people that were talking about it. Some were interested or some needed to use the technology. Some were working on the analytics. And that's why data science and engineering is so fitting, right? Some people are doing the science. The others are doing the engineering to support the science, to support the data, to set up these scaling systems and everything. And the scientists are going to go out and they're going to use the go talk to the business they're going to use the data to try to figure out solutions to trying to create good analytics results where the business can have new insights or make more money with it or create new products i tried to illustrate something here and the this also shows it so big data it, it's not fully dead people are still searching for it right but the hype Hype is gone. It's not really growing anymore. The blue line here, let me bring up my mouse cursor before I forgot about it again. Um, okay, now you can see. It. So the blue line here, that's the, that's the, uh, the big data curve here and the red one, that's data science. I didn't put in data engineering here because <laughs> Google uh, doesn't really have a something like topic or field of study for data engineering. I would need to put in search results here, which doesn't really, it's not an apples to apples comparison then. So you can see big, the big data topic is going down here and the, uh, the data science is going up here. If I, of course, I, I could, I could add here as a comparison, I could add your data engineering, but it, of course it's lower than that. It's, it's somewhere here, uh, <clears throat> but it's, as I said, for analytics, it doesn't have a, a real good comparison for this. I tried this. Um, if, if you want, we can, we can quickly do this. Let me bring it up. Do I still have it up here? Um, Trends.google big data or let's just try to use search terms here I can quickly go to it let me switch to English worldwide 2004 data science ah Data science search term. Maybe with the search terms we can use this. Data engineering search term. So, as you can see, it's data engineering is is below here. It's we are a small community. Uh, the search results are not big. It's not like data science. And that's why I, I kept it out because it's, it's a bit boring for that of an important field, right? Um, so where was I? Let me quickly try to get back here. <laughs> yeah, so we were talking about big data versus data science. So as you can see, big data isn't really growing anymore. But when you talk about data science, that's the that's the replacement for this. And it's not just like a short hype. Big uh, data science is going up here. Same like, uh, where was data engineering here? Let me quickly recap. Data engineering, mm, let, let's quickly do a past five years. Uh, it's, it's not really going up as strong as, um, as data science. Now we were talking, so as you can see, the curves, the curve, the search curves tell you a lot. We were talking about Hadoop and Gavin said here before, like in some job, app, uh, job descriptions, there is still Hadoop. And I asked this last week, um, unfortunately, I'm in the way here. This has 300 and 
and 42 votes here. Um, I asked, does your company still use Hadoop? And 31% said, yes, we still use Hadoop. 34 said, no, not anymore. So that means 60% here were at some point were using Hadoop and no, never have 36. Right? And these 36 are not going to go on Hadoop if they can't. Right? So the 34% have already managed to go away to take a different route than Hadoop, take a different approach to Hadoop. And what is that approach? What killed that big data, that synonym of big data, the technologies, Hadoop? What is it? Let me know in the chat. What do you think? Uh, while I take a sip of tea here, what do you guess what the, what the replacement for Hadoop is? Why also that is that, yeah. There's a question, why, where does machine learning come into all of this? Well, machine learning comes into all of this in the data science part. That split it off from the, from the big data. Data engineering and data science are split it off, for, or big data became data science and data engineering. And the machine learning comes into play with the, uh, with the data science part with the scientist that is doing statistics that is maybe also doing machine learning. Not in every uh, company, not with every job, but that's the, that's where it comes in. So I'm reading here. What, so what replaced Hadoop? Spark killed Hadoop, Spark the cloud, Spark, Spark cheap cloud storage, Spark always. I agree. But Hadoop was more than just Spark, and Spark is just like the the processing, right? Snowflake, also see here, Snowflake, BigQuery, ELT, Spark, DBT. This it goes into the right directions. We we read Cloud Storage, Spark, Databricks, Cloud, Cloud, Spark, Cloud. Maybe Spark is replacing Hadoop. So it's the cloud. A lot of you were already on the right track. It is the cloud. And when you look <laughs> at the curves here, this tells you a really, really interesting story. And I have one for all the Nexus, the one for all the cloud platforms, but this one is just for Hadoop and AWS. Right? And with AWS, I need to use here the website thing because it, ugh, that's how, that's how Google. Uh, trends work sometimes but so that's how it is as you can see here very for for a long time here aws and hadoop the terms were fairly close by right they were close together but then at some point and when was that 20 that's 10 maybe 2016 or let's say let's say here Gen 2017, AWS really took off, right? The cloud took off. And that is the big game changer. It's the cloud. It's, it's not like uh, this is a small thing. Basically, Hadoop is, is out of style. And that's why also the, the big data thing doesn't fit anymore. Big data was very synonymous. Synonym, synonymous? <laughs> I, I know you I think you know what I mean uh, it was very close to tied together with Hadoop and so that that's yeah I also created this for for um, all three GCP Azure and AWS so you can see Azure here is also very very high um, GCP is fairly is lower but yeah, we see here, they're very close together, actually. 
relatively close. Here they were relatively close, but I'm guessing Google changed something here. That's why this node was here. And then they, they, they were different. Um, yeah, so that that's so far. Now, why, why is that so important? As I said, with big data, the idea with big data earlier was it's connected technology. Technology was a big part of big data. The four Vs, processing the data and large amounts and having scalable systems and everything. And the analytics part, the analytics part is not the one I want to focus on here because we all know I'm not a data scientist, but we all, we have seen how data science really took off. But the important part is scalable solutions are not a problem anymore. It's, I mean, when we look at the clouds and I don't know if you have worked on the cloud, put a one, just a one in the chat if you have worked with the cloud before, because I'm sure if you have worked with the cloud, you know how easy this is. You know how easy this is to set up. You know how easy it is to scale on the cloud. It's very, very simple and you don't really have to worry about this these topics anymore that were big data the four v's of big data yes conceptually it's still a thing these four v's are still a thing but it's no longer that you're in such a need of the new tools and so on it's no longer such a hype you just take a different approach oh, okay i see a lot of ones in the chat for the for the uh, having worked with the cloud. So it's not really a big deal. You can very easily scale on the cloud. And that's why it's not, just, not such a problem anymore. And I have to admit that's the end of my presentation here that I, that I created. Uh, just because I didn't have any time anymore. <laughs> so I think I could have could have gotten up, um, uh, could have uh, come up with 15 more slides. But I think you get the point that my point here is, of course, you're, you can use big data as much as you want. It's, it's not a big deal. But we all can see that the hype is gone. It's not really connected anymore to the old technologies that were hyped during the big data days. A lot of problems that we had during the big data times are not any are not relevant anymore because we have platforms now that are very easy to work with, very easy to scale, and so on. And yeah, that, I think that's that's the we that's the th that's the thing. So. That's why I don't want to use big data anymore. I still, as I said, I'm a bit of a hypocrite. I still use it in my in my posts on social media because people are still searching for it and like, <laughs> you know, why not? Um, oh, here this one. What's the big deal? I'm guessing what's the big deal with not with big data being dead? Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. I just think nowadays we are more into data science and data engineering. And that's the that's the, the the important point I want to bring over here. I want to tell you, Databricks is dive. <laughs> so if it, yeah, I mean, Databricks, I get it. It's it's very hyped. It's it is good. That's why I created a course for it in my academy. It is one of the platforms where people are working at that people that companies use that companies look for um so go for it and th these are look more into data bricks says gavin of course but your data bricks has to run somewhere so it's going to run on aws azure or gcp right gavin so that you need to also you need to have a platform in the background where data bricks is running Databricks, Snowflake, all these new things. And would you, now, if, if we're honest, would you say, if 
when you talk about big data, would you talk about big data and data bricks anymore or that you're that you're doing big data on Snowflake? See what I mean? It doesn't really fit anymore. This this whole topic it doesn't really fit anymore. Uh, you would do data science on on Databricks. You would uh, set up your data infrastructure, your processing on Databricks. You would set up your data platform on Databricks. But big data on Databricks, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's like. Hi, <laughs> Gavin. Yeah, AWS. I know, I know. Um, um, am I more into Databricks or Snowflake? I'm absolutely, I'm impartial on that. I like both. Um, of course, somehow, because having worked with Spark for a long time, somehow Spark is still in my heart and therefore Databricks. But I can absolutely see why people like Snowflake, why people work with Snowflake. It's very easy to use. It's very nice to, to process data because you can work with SQL queries and, and SQL statements. So I see it for me being in a full time educational role. I don't care. Like I, I don't have a favorite asset. Like maybe some, maybe a bit data bricks. Maybe we should do a comparison of that at some point. Should we do a comparison of Databricks versus versus uh, Snowflake in the like in, in different categories? Would that be interesting? Hmm. Maybe. Um. Ah, I already see a one. Okay, okay. Okay. Then put a one in the chat. Let me let me see it. Who one in the chat for yes, two for no. Should we do a comparison of that? Would that be interesting? Like different categories with where is this better, where is that better? Should we do that? Should I prepare this and then we talk about it on stream and then you, you absolutely crucify me for for being uh for 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 doing this as a not professional. Okay, okay, I see once. I see once. Okay, I'm going I'm going to prepare something. Jody, okay. George. Uh, oh, George has a very nice point here. Uh, George says, yes, I think Databricks is like an overkill to some organizations, unnecessary added complexity. Absolutely, 100%. That is a, a big, a big topic. And it was it was back in the big data days as well. Like, because it was so focused on Hadoop, and it was so focused on, let's call it Hadoop. These do you read or when you think about are we going to go on these platforms? Are we going to use Hadoop back in the days? Are we going to use AWS? Are we going to use Databricks? It's always, and that's where the good engineers coming in. The question is always, do we really need this? It's easier nowadays because the process is not so big as with Hadoop. Hadoop was usually a big deal to set up, big deal to maintain. So you really had to figure out we if the overhead that you're generating, the, the headache that you're, that you're generating by using it is actually worth it. Nowadays, I think with Databricks as well, it's not really that, that difficult anymore. Yes, of course, the question is always, do I really need it? But it's no longer such a big deal than, uh, than, with, uh, than with Hadoop. So, but it's a good, it's a really, really good thing that every good engineer or platform architect need to think, needs to think about this. All right. I, I have seen a lot of ones for a comparison data bricks and snowflake. So, all right. All right. All right. I can show, I can create something like that for, uh, from the view of not a user, but somebody who has, has, uh, has teached it because I, I created, um, 
courses for both of them, for Snowflake and for for Databricks. Was I saying Hadoop before? I don't know. For Snowflake and Databricks, and also we have a course on Hadoop. Uh, so let's let's use let's do that. Um, You can use Databricks with another data warehouse. So no, you can choose Databricks only as environment to develop Spark and use cloud computing without storage. Yeah, 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 Thomas. Like you could say uh, we're, we're keeping our data in Snowflake and we're processing it, I think. Then we you could say uh, we're keeping our data in S3, restoring everything in, in AWS S3 as files in the data lake or in GCP data lake or something. Or we connect to other data sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use it as a processing framework. All right. So, oh, what was, oh, uh, maybe one thing. I just, um, while I'm thinking about it, let's just try something here. I want to see something. When we go here, I want to see here Cloudera. Come on. Cloudera. Are we going to do software company? Map R. Ah, it doesn't have it anymore. And just use, then let's just use search term here. And let's go Hortonworks here. And those are just the past five years. Let's do 2004 into present. Okay. So we can see, what can we see here? Cloudera, there was a, there was a hype and then it was going down. Map R. It's still my well. Let, I'm not sure if that's still the that's the real right search term. And Hortonworks is basically dead. Right. Let, let's bring up. Let's bring up something like we know GCP is not as as high as AWS. So let's see how that fits in here. Okay. <laughs> this uh so called there i'm about hortonworks <laughs> all right all right uh data bricks dvd all right let's let's do a few searches data bricks and let's try to use dbt here dbt technologies let's try if we and snowflake was Uh, maybe company. Mm. So we have Databricks and Snowflake. Well, let's, let's remove GCP here. I'm not sure. We could use DBT as a search term here, maybe. Mm. It's very difficult to see because Snowflake, as you can see here, there are there are peaks for Snowflake. So, of course, that's some winter winter things. Although we use Snowflake company, they're they're regular Snowflake. Mm. Very difficult, difficult to see, and I don't think DBT is well. Could it be that high? Hmm. Mohammed asks here, what are your thoughts about a data scientists to learn basics of data engineering? Should they do it? Focus on modeling? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I think, I think every data scientist or most data scientists should have a, a basic knowledge of data engineering. 
that's why I also created it like that in my academy. In the academy, I also I basically focused the academy as well for data scientists who need engineering because a lot of data scientists, especially in larger teams where there might not be any engineers there, need to figure out and to set up a, a proof of concept, need to figure out some solution to show to people. right? And for that, I think it's very important for scientists as well to have that fundamental knowledge in engineering to to understand what is streaming, to maybe have worked with a streaming pipeline to be able to set something up on AWS. I think, or, or like with Apache Kafka or with Spark, you know, I think that's, that's, that's very important. <clears throat> So about that, uh, I see something about Airflow. I think these these tools like Airflow, they are orchestration tools are very important. As I, I like here, I can show you something. And I in my academy, I put, only put interesting stuff in my academy into my academy that I think is important, right? Is important for engineers and maybe also for scientists. So when you look at and here's everything that is in the academy, Python for data engineers, that's something important. Docker is something important. And just to point out a few things, but from pipeline design, I'm going to rename this to data modeling because I think that's the ter schema design here is a terrible. A terrible name, but to the, about the about the fundamental tools here. I think fundamental tools that a lot of people should know: how to create APIs, how to do API design, Airflow, Spark, Databricks, Kafka, MongoDB as a document store. A big deal, big deal. Snowflake. Very often, Elasticsearch to have to analyze your logs, to not go through log files, but have it all in a in a centralized thing. DBT is something that is coming next. I'm I'm currently working on that. That should I I would have, would have wanted to be done already since two weeks, but I'm working on it. And then the cloud platforms, AWS, Azure, um, something I even have a dupe here. But these are the important things. But keep in mind who who asked that now with, with the airflow? George. Keep in mind, always ask yourself the question, do I really need Airflow? If you just need to schedule a few jobs and these jobs run once a day, and do you really need to set up Airflow for this? Or is a simple cron job with a bit of logging uh, enough for this, right? Does a cron job uh, solve every problem and then everything is good? Keep that in mind. That might be, um, or that is a very important question. I personally, I'll, if you have a lot of jobs that you need to run, if you need to schedule more complicated pipelines, of course, use Airflow, work with Airflow. Uh, great tool, great tool, but keep in mind the overhead. Alrighty, um, something else, anybody else? Any more questions? Or are we going to finish for today? So I, I prepare for next time. Oh, the, the snowflake versus data breaks thing. <laughs> I think that was fun. Like who, who, who has been for everybody who has watching my previous live streams? How did you like the 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 mix with the presentations. Should I do this a bit more? I'm like trying to get in presentations, trying to visualize the thing a bit more, the things a bit more. It would be super interesting for me to know. So maybe, uh, maybe write a, a very short comment. Like if, if I should do more, to put one in the chat, if I should do more of these slides, if, if you want to see more slides like today, 
or just a two if it's okay if if like the past streams uh you liked as well and it's fine for you do me that favor please um i see we have 60 people here still so do me the favor and put this in and yeah that because that's that's very important for me otherwise what can we talk as well I should, I, I, no let's then let's finish up for today do me a favor put that in the chat one if we if you want would like to see more of these slides that i add more slides on a daily basis or um if two if if you say that's overkill all right everybody thanks for being here if you want to learn data engineering remember if you want to learn data engineering what's the best place to learn data engineering learn data engineering.com <laughs> Uh, yeah, check out my academy. Uh, a lot of a lot of information. It, I and like I said here in the beginning, I made this for beginners and professionals. Beginners who start out, um, who maybe coming from a university, or professionals who want to switch into data engineering for data engineers, so you learn new stuff, or as well for scientists um, who yeah want to broaden their knowledge want to gain some new experience uh, expertise in data engineering yeah i see ones in the chat okay okay i hear you i hear you i'm trying to make this like today like a, a simple simple uh slide backed live stream uh yeah i'm going to be back tomorrow have a good one now i'm going to Call my wife that I can pick up my daughter at her friend. And yeah. Have a good one. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye bye.